wonderful thing. It is the most powerful force in the human world. Not love, not hate, fear. When you were a mortal boy, what did you fear? Monsters. Hmm. We are defined by the things we fear. This symbol, these two planks of wood, it confounds me, suffuses me with mortal dread. But fear is in the mind. like pain it can be controlled if i can face my fear it cannot master me hello friends we are doing it we're here with episode 10 of revisiting sunnydale i am camila and i am marcella and we are your hosts for this glorious buffy rewatch yes join us for nightmares yes which isn't as bad of an episode as i thought it was going to be no i enjoy it it's been a while since i've seen this one so we're gonna get into this what's your worst fear yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Anything with more than four legs, I would mm. imagine. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. It's just <sighs> minor clowns. Yeah. And luckily, we get both in this yes, episode. Absolutely. So both both of our fears are, are fully realized. Yeah. Awesome. Spoilers. There's going to be spoilers, guys. And also, just a reminder: please check out our Facebook page. Like it. Revisiting Sunnydale. We like to post a bunch of Buffy-related stuff and some other pop culture geekified things yeah tell us what you think we'd love to know your thoughts and are you watching along with us yes. are you following us like, we let us know. know and if so like are you watching your dvds or are you streaming from amazon hulu or netflix of which it is available right now mm-hmm. so let's get into this and we're going to start off with some unboxing yeah marcella has yeah. got another loot crate and it's a big one. Oh, it's a big one it's a big box it's a that's a the biggest crate of loot i've ever yeah. seen yeah after the failure that was the combat box, I got a email from Loot Crate saying there was a special edition Doctor Who box. Mm, this almost makes yeah, up for it. It really does. So this is a, I have box 3,551 out so of 10,000. Why do you, why are you so special? Why do you get the? Uh, well, you it was $50. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to pay for there it. There it is. Yeah, I had to pay for it. It was 50 bucks. Um. But there were only 10,000 made. So, okay. Yeah. They have a couple, they do special edition boxes every now and again. There's a Star Wars one coming out, but it's $100. Oh, no. You're supposed to get I don't a know, Stormtrooper? Like yeah, really. Like, seriously. <laughs> like, seriously. So, this is a $50 box that was supposed to have $80 of value, okay. which I think it does. Okay. I'm actually really pleased with this box. It really does make up for November's combat theme that. If you listen to our last podcast, you'll know that I hated quite a bit. <laughs> so this box, every month the Loot Crate boxes turn around. You can turn them inside out, and there's like a special little theme or whatever. This one, if you turn it around, it's a TARDIS. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, turn, and it just turns into a big, giant TARDIS, which I actually probably will use. and <laughs> For all of your TARDIS needs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they always... Um, Starting with December, Loot Crate will now include a t-shirt in every box. Okay. So that's going to up the game a little for shitty boxes. Yeah. You and know? they're not, like, charging you more. No. Right? Apparently not. They haven't said they are. I hope they don't. This one came with a really cute t-shirt. A Funko t-shirt. Aw. Yeah. The weeping... And then it's a little weeping angel. Aw, that's cute. And it says, don't look at me. <laughs> 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 She's so cute. I cannot wait to wear her. I love so it. I'm very happy with that. Next, we have a Doctor Who in your pocket keychain, and you press it, and it has Exterminate. different. Exterminate. Yeah, just a <laughs> bunch of different. The TARDIS sound. I use it to scare the shit out of my dogs. <laughs> As you know, most things like that are used. Right, because I mean, look at the size of this thing. Who's putting this on their keys? No, that's a lot. Like happening. It's a good six inches long. Well, five inches maybe. I don't know. 
I'm not good, I'm not with, good with metric system. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's big. Yeah. Let's just say it's big. So it's not going on my keys. Then we have a full-size replica of the 12th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. Wow. Before, you just had like a spork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I get a full spring-loaded extending action electronic lights and sounds. I have not opened it yet because I will not stop playing with it once I do. <laughs> so it hasn't come out of the box yet. And then we have, oddly enough, police box sprinkles. <laughs> Like I, I'm not sure I should consume these no. because of the amount of blue dye that's in that's them. So much blue dye. So much blue dye, but it's by Geeky Hostess. It almost looks like salt that you yeah. for your um sidewalks. Yes, <laughs> they do not really look like tartuses. No. Like they're little. Like maybe they, mm, they look like vitamins. Uh, uh, Whatever. Geeky Hostess. I'm yeah. intrigued by that. So, Wonder what the big thing in the box is a gorgeous. 6.5 inch TARDIS wow. Titan vinyl. Wow. It's a giant, adorable TARDIS that will go with the David Tennant that I have, the 10th Doctor. He's also on the box. Nice. So now I have a pair. Because as we found <laughs> out, I like to have pairs with my figures. So now my Tennant has a TARDIS. Now you have to unbox that one. I know. I'm thinking about it because he has to stand next to David. So I'm thinking about cracking it open. I I don't have room for all these boxes. So (laughs) they're just going to have to come out. And then there's, so it's a little pamphlet that says Doctor Who limited edition crate, step inside. And it just is a pamphlet that tells you. Okay. And so apparently I could have gotten the TARDIS or a weird little Peter Capaldi Titan vinyl. Mm. And I got the better one, I, I think. Yeah, I think so. And a lucky 25 looters get a bad robot metal sculpture Dalek. I did not get that. (laughs) I was not one of the lucky 25 out of 10,000. That's fine. And then the last thing in the box is a Doctor Who comic. I'll probably read that at some point. Because I love everything Doctor Who. <laughs> so, it, but it it looks like it's a Clara and Capaldi, which I'm not that fond of. Uh-huh. I'm f- like falling out of it a bit i'm like three or four episodes behind on the current season oh, okay and that never happened oh you before. were always just yeah. like i need it i need it i gotta get it i, I mean part it of now. it is we got rid of cable mm-hmm. but part of it is i'm not totally in love with capaldi like i was Ooh. matt smith and david Tennant. so yeah that's the special edition doctor who box i think it was totally worth 50 bucks yeah, I'm not one. mad about it. That's a good one. Yeah. The t-shirt is probably, it's just so cute. It is. But yeah, so I don't think I'm going to do the special edition Star Wars box because it's $100. That's a lot of money. For... And it's supposed to have $150 value. Does it have tickets to the movie? Yeah. Because the... I just, I need more for my 100 bucks. That's a lot. Seriously. And there's some kind of like... I don't know, special Fallout, like, more Some Fallout 4 stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Which we have come to discover, we've, we've solidified that Marcella is not a Fallout 4 I'm fan. I'm not a Fallout fan. We don't know what's going on with it. Please, somebody explain it to me. I, I don't get the... I don't get the appeal. I, I mean... I play video games. Right. But I don't play that one. I no. don't even know anything about that one. I don't understand. Uh, there's, I keep seeing like these big pieces of like extra stuff that goes yeah. along with it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And this is four. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I've really missed the boat, people. I don't know what is the deal with it. Someone clue me in. Um. So yeah. So Marcella got an awesome Doctor Who box. I did. I loved it. And that was super cool. Uh, as we mentioned last episode, we do tend to record our episodes in bulk. Um, at the same, in, well, in advance. The magic of Hollywood. Because we don't want to miss an episode. Because yeah. you know, sometimes life gets into the way, mm-hmm. and we don't want that to happen. We want to be with you guys every week. Yeah. So, um, while you're listening to this one, you're probably getting ready to uh, uh celebrate New Year's Eve. Yep. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve and stuff. Here's to a very, very safe, happy, and healthy. 2016. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people who are happy to see that 2015 is gone. Um, I had a pretty good 2015. My 2015 didn't suck. I know I, a lot of people had some pretty bad 2015s, and we lost some people this year. And yeah. It, you know, it's, 
But personally, personally, I'm all right. My with 2015 it. was all right. Thank you, 2015. Thank you. I think we did a great job. We did a bang up job. Yeah. Thanks for not shitting on my year. Right. <laughs> Let's do, do you, it again in 2016. Do you generally make like New Year's res- resolutions? No. Yeah. yeah. I uh, used to, but it's like, eh, maybe it's just something you should need to do daily. Because I'll just set to... myself up for failure. Yep. It's like it's when you set that. Well, I'll start on mm-hmm. the first of the year, and then when you like screw up. For like you, you do well for the first week, and then you screw up, and then you're just like, oh well, yeah. There's no sense in starting I'm not, over again. Just forget it. Yeah. yeah. Nope. I feel like you should make some sort of resolution every day, yeah. or you know, just daily. Whenever you feel like it's time for a change in your life, you make that change yep. in your life. Be the change. Yep. And I never, when I quit smoking, I always said I was never a well. I'll I'll do it this way. Mm-hmm. I will set up a plan and not. No, I went on vacation. Mm-hmm. I quit cold turkey. The cigarettes I had on me for vacation were the last ones I was going to smoke. When they were gone, they were gone, and I never smoked again. Good deal. Yeah. And how long has it been? Uh, almost 10 years. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Did you, never look back. Did it take up any, like, were you snacking more after? Oh, yeah, I put on 30 pounds. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And it took me, I just now got it off. Nice. Yeah. So you're just a constant change. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just ate and ate. And it, it wasn't that hard. I mean, I was on vacation, so I had other things to do. Mm-hmm. And sure, in the back of my mind, I kept going, cigarette, 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 cigarette. Shut up! Right. But after a while, it just, it you know. The only thing I did prior to that was I made a rule not to smoke in the house anymore. Okay, so that, that help, that's yeah. very helpful. Yeah. When you're not just mm-hmm. sitting there idly yeah. doing it, just yeah. like, you know, idly eating or whatever. But yeah. That's the big step. Yeah, when you just have to go outside yes, into the cold. In the cold. Mm-hmm. That'll now, if I lived in Florida, it would have never worked. <laughs> it never worked because no. I like that more. <laughs> just sitting outside in the sun, like, that's great. Doing it in Pittsburgh in the cold? No. Good luck with that. That's not cute. No. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, if you guys, anybody out there looking to quit smoking, it can happen. It can happen. You can do you it. Can, you can do it. So, um, Nightmares. Season 1, episode 10. The original air date was May 12, 1997. Written by David Greenwalt, directed by Bruce Seth Green. And the summary for this one is, Buffy and her friends discover that their worst nightmares have become reality. I would I would die if my worst nightmares... Pennywise is my worst nightmare, and I would just become a sniveling, throwing up mess of emotions. Have you ever emotions. Had, had any... Li- have you ever had any like recurring nightmares or no no i have this odd talent of being able to control my dreams oh i'm so yeah control yeah my dreams. when because i just remember that they're not real mm. and so when things aren't going my way mm-hmm. i just flip the script remind myself it's not real and do what i want that's wonderful mm-hmm. my i don't have it very often but it, it used to be Getting into something happening, like something scary is going to happen, and I'm unable to scream mm. or, like, even fight back. Like, you know, you try to throw the punch, and it's like a yeah. week. It lands yeah. like that. So, yeah, that would those be... are my – that's a, those are awful. Yeah, it's and my, and my dreams are always, like, movie length. Like, they're always, like, start to finish. Yeah, I, I, I have that, too, as to where it's, like, this – and I really wish I paid more attention Me too. when I sit down and write them when I woke mm-hmm. up. But it's just, like – like wow, that could have been a really great yeah. script. And yep, I can't remember a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got like five seconds when you wake up. Yeah, I should keep like a recorder beside my bed. Yeah, but I don't know. Or why. maybe hit the voice recorder on my smartphone. <laughs> don't know why I don't do that. No, it's, I feel like maybe I'm setting myself up for failure at that point. Like, or it's the fact because we both have two dogs. <laughs> I wake up and immediately get mauled. I have to pee. I have to pee. Please, please. <laughs> Let me lick your face. It's like shiny. I get distracted really easily. And then I'm like, oh, let me have some coffee. What was that dream I had? Yeah. And then it's gone. Yeah. One of these days. One of these days, something will be worth writing down and it'll make me a million bucks. Yep. So. We have a notable guest star. Very much so. Mr. Dean Butler. Hank. Hank Summers. This you is the first son time. Son of a bitch. This is this the first time he shows up? Yeah. Episode 10, season one. He is around. He comes back. He's in a total of five episodes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Great dad. Some people may know him from Little House on the Prairie. Ah, uh, yes. He did 65 episodes. Yes. He was married to some... I don't know. I didn't watch that show. Very much. I watched it when I was little, but I don't remember anything about it. My mom watched it. I 
It's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, I if I had my I can't really way about it yeah. in any way. If I had my choice, when I, I would have never seen an episode. But. <laughs> it's like Johnny Mnemonic. If there was a way that I could dump things I don't need, it would be my memories of things like that. Yes. I don't need that. Yes. It's so. taking up space of things I need. <laughs> like simple like, math. Like where, where I put my car keys. Yeah. Things like that. But yeah, Hank Summers is, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. So, you know, as everybody knows, Buffy's mom and dad are divorced and Hank is coming up for a weekend visit or coming to grab Buffy for a weekend yeah. visit. And it, from the way that Buffy's acting about it, it seems like he's not very consistent. No, she's very visits. worried about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, as I guess most kids who are a product of div- who uh, parents have divorced, they are always worried that it's their fault yeah. that their parents have divorced. And, you know, I... Because I grew up in a one-parent household, so I don't know what it's like to have two parents in mm-hmm. the home. So I just don't – that's not something that I get Right. when people are just very con- – when kids are concerned or when it's like their lives are crumbling when their parents divorce. Yeah. So not to say that, you know, it's – I'm sure it's devastating, but I just don't understand it. And it's not until they're adults that they realize it had nothing to do with you. Right. They got Everybody's got their own set of yeah. problems. Unless you truly are like the most dickish, <sighs> evil child on the face of the planet. Hitler's parents may have <laughs> – Maybe they would have divorced. If they divorced, it definitely would have been because of him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Buffy's like excited but nervous. She's nervous, like, nerve sighted. Yeah. About... And she's talking to Willow about it. And who's who we found out Willow's parents don't really fight. They just kind of glare. Yeah. <laughs> when they have disagreements. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the flip side. Like, is it better to have one parent that loves you like Joyce mm-hmm. and have Hank who never comes around? Or two parents who hate each other. Or two parents that hate each other and ignore you completely. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. It's almost like, yeah, that's much better to have at least the one solid mm-hmm. foundation yeah. of a parent who is just going to be there for you. Yep. Because there's a moment in season three where Sheila, Willow's mom, is like, you cut your hair. Yeah. Oh, God. About six months ago, mom. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Her, well, the Rosenbergs are awful yeah. parents. Ira and Sheila. <laughs> we never see Ira, ever. Mm-mm. He's only discussed here and there. Yeah, but he sounds like a piece of work. Mm-hmm. He doesn't sound very um, loving or attentive. Yeah. So they're in class, and of course, once again, Cordelia is being a sure. uber bitch. <laughs> and Xander and Wendell are guest star child i guess guest student for the episode yeah is standing in cordelia's light and she's not having it. she's not having it she's trying to put makeup on and she's just why don't you just revolve yourself away from my light (laughs) and we get what is she's a pretty cute teacher yeah she's all right she's got a very tight sweater on pretty short skirt for a teacher she looks maybe mid 30s it's like i feel like um most parent or most teachers should high school teachers like i mean can't you dress appropriately right like, just just come on just wear pants all yeah. the time or i mean it's uh, high school boys don't need any extra no to like start fantasizing about and you. he so xander doesn't even remember anything other than the fact that she had the midnight blue angora sweater on and the big right. ears he does yes. the the active listening yes the, what's <laughs> funny is that the, the subject at hand was active listening <laughs> yes and what he remembered was what she was wearing yes and how she was filling it out so she asks wendell to read from the book and he opens the book and horror comes out <laughs> <laughs> that is that is hell mouth personified. Just, yeah, uh, it's awful. There's just like bu- spider upon just, spider, tarantulas, just not bu- just spiders, bleh. tarantulas, hairy, Big, hairy, gross, Mm-mm. just gross and not just okay with vicious this. and uh, and he just starts screaming. Rightfully so. I'm surprised he was staying seated. Yeah, like I would have gone running. Yeah. Tearing and down the halls. Again, there's no class announcement. There's no evacuation because we don't worry about things like that at Sunnydale. No. Like uh, like hundreds of tarantulas uh-huh. come from this kid's book or out of nowhere and school doesn't get shut down. Yeah. I don't understand it. So now we get another annoying one scene. And I don't understand this. I, I don't get this scene, actually. I do I don't understand like how. Rocks. Well, no, I don't understand how the master knows what's going on. Right. He's just like nightmares are coming. Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. It's kind of like in season four when Jonathan changes the entire world, mm-hmm. and Adam's just like, "That's all fake." Yeah. 
<laughs> well, how come you're the only one that knows? Yeah, I, I don't it's understand. the same thing with the master. I don't understand how he, and he almost feels it. He's just like. It doesn't make any sense yeah. because it's not like it's something just happening just because it's the hell mouth. Right. It's because this little kid and it's kind of specific to son, to the high school. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, it doesn't make any sense why he knows. And he's just telling the annoying one, like, yep. He's breaking it down for him. Yeah. They're, like, just chatting away, like, and he's huh? giving him life lessons. Wait, and why? All right. I hate that kid so much. He's awful. So, um, yeah, so we've got this, like, after the spiders come about, we see this little kid, not Joseph Gordon-Levitt. No, he's not the, Joseph Gordon, but he sure school. does look like him. <laughs> He could very much be. And I looked him up, and um, he did not grow up to look like that. No, I don't... he did not, because I looked him up, too, and I kept thinking, I know this kid from something, but right. I don't. Nope, absolutely not. Nothing. I was like, this can't be the right person. Yeah. And I just kept, I was like, all right, so. Um... I guess it is. But was he in, like, Dante's Peak or something? Yes. Okay. So that's the only other thing that I have. And he was a child at the time. Right. So that's the only other thing. Yeah, but. So, yeah, so not Joseph Gordon-Levitt is haunting, quote-unquote, the school. Yeah, he's like, sorry about that. <laughs> he's kind of showing up when all these weird things happen, like, whoops. Mm-hmm. And only Buffy sees him. Yes. I don't know why. <sighs> okay. Um. Yeah. So there's that, and then there's another girl who, like, sneaks off to go smoking in the <laughs> boiler room and then gets beaten to almost to death by the ugly man. <laughs> yes. So we've had an angel in the episode Angel. When Buffy's going, like that montage scene when she's preparing for her fight with Angel, Mm -hmm. she gets the crossbow and she shoots it at a sign that says smoking kills. Yes. (laughs) In Puppet Show, Snyder says how much he hates smoking. Yeah. (laughs) And now in this episode, this poor girl just goes to sneak off for a smoke and she does. She almost gets beaten to death. (laughs) Smoking does kill. I feel like there's a bigger message in here. Yeah, I feel like you're trying to tell us something, Joss. (laughs) And I, uh, I think I got the message. I got it. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so weird things are just happening at the school, and um, like everybody, their nightmares are becoming realized. Yes, and so the, everybody's got like our Scoobies go to the library looking for Giles, <laughs> who comes stumbling out of the stacks. He got lost. Apparently he's, he was lost. <laughs> he's afraid of getting lost in the stacks. That is one of Giles' fears. And um, he also can't read Yes, right now. Yes. He's like pouring over hundreds of newspapers and he can't understand why he can't make any sense of them. <laughs> yep. And Buffy's like, what do you mean? You speak like five languages. And he's like, not today. Doesn't he even say something like six, but. <laughs> yeah. Today seems to be a lot. Sorry. I, I, I missed your. I beg your pardon. <laughs> My fault. But and there's a there's a really funny mistake in the episode, mm. which is if he can't read, how's he know it's Buffy's grave later? Ooh. He can't read. And no one tells him it's Buffy's right. grave. He just assumes. Uh-huh. He's like, It's my nightmare. <laughs> How do you know? Yeah. That's just a tombstone to you. It just says blur. Gubble, gubble, gubble. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see that that says Buffy Summer. It's just letters. You don't know. So we have our gang interviewing because they love to interrogate people. I'm so glad they kind of got away from this. Me too. Because this is just dumb. <laughs> so they're interrogating poor Wendell and they're like, have you always been afraid of spiders? And he's like, no, I love them. <laughs> Ew. Uh, why would he? So what is your fear exactly? So uh, them retaliating. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because his brother oh, he that's tells right. him a story about he had like a, you know, the best collection of spiders in the Tri County area or, or Tri State, whatever. And um, you are single. He went, <laughs> he went away on to, uh, I don't know, insect camp. <laughs> and <laughs> his brother was supposed to take care of him. He did not. They died. They all and died. And so he's had nightmares that these, inse- uh, these spiders have come back to retaliate. Ugh. So that's his fear. And while they're interrogating him, Cordelia comes up and says, what are you doing here? We're going to be late for class. We have a quiz. Buffy has no idea what class this is. So this is her nightmare. It should have been weird that Cordelia even gives a fuck. Spoke to them. Right. Like, why would she? Like, I hope you studied for a history class. At this point, she basically only pops up to antagonize them. Yeah. She's just kind of there like, hey, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So Buffy's just wandering around. She doesn't even know where this 
uh, no. class is. No, and then, you know, Cordy sees her wandering the hall. She's like, you don't even know her class, <laughs> yeah. do you? She's like, you've skipped every time. Yep. And um, so Buffy's going in to take the test, and uh, she knows nothing. Yep. Uh, the, and the clock is, like, speeding up, and she's like, oh, at least I know my name. Yeah. And then she cracks her pencil <laughs> and goes to sharpen it, and it's, like, an hour later, and it's time to, <laughs> to yep. leave. The bell rings. And, and Billy um, pops up again. Yeah. This creepy kid that no one... She's the only person that sees him. Yep. So there's, like, while all this is going on, there's a, a couple other rando um, nightmares that we're just seeing on the off skirt. Like, there's the greasers mom. <laughs> there's the guy who's, like... <laughs> is he dressed like a jet <laughs> I, like in 97 i'm pretty sure that was not considered what the gang bangers no. were wearing no so he's like seriously he looks like a jet and yeah. he's got his sunglasses on inside the school and he's going on about those guys want rumble the yeah. rumble and then his mom shows up and yeah. is like giving him the kissy 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 he completely embarrasses him um and uh then you know buffy's history test Giles can't read oh and um xander Walks into class naked. Completely naked. Well, he's got his box. Oh, that's on. right. He has his weird whitey, tidy whitey boxers. Yeah, they're just, they're very nondescript, just mm-hmm. like the plain old just boxers. And Willow's just like, oh, <laughs> Xander! <laughs> I had my, and he starts pinching himself out. <laughs> Wake up, out. It's like amazing upper body torso area. Yeah, um, super fit. Yeah, he was uh, doing good things in 97. And um, so, yeah. Cordelia and Cordy, her hair. Cordy's hair. Woo! Oh, that That had to have girl. been a wig. They could not have done <laughs> no, that to her hair. Yeah, that poor girl. So she has pretty hair. Yeah, her hair is gorgeous. Yeah. It's nice and thick and yep. shiny and smooth. Yep. And it's so... Ugh. And it... Oh. And her clothes. Like, she's all of a sudden dressed like she's a... She's like a super nerd. She yes. looks like... No, she looks like um, Gilda Radner <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. And is it the chess club? That's yes. Like, they're, they're dragging her to chess club. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to go. Rosanna Dana Dana. That's what, <laughs> that's what Cordy looks like. <laughs> For all of you young kids out there, uh, Gilda Radner was a, a female comedian. One of the best. And uh, she, uh, back in the 70s, 80s. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Saturday Night Live. Look her up. She's hilarious. Yep. And so um, we've got that, and we've got poor Willow, who's got, who um, ends up being pushed out on stage to sing. Yes, an an opera. And there's a, a, the trivia says there's a goof there, too, that when he looks at her the first time, Mm -hmm. and she doesn't say anything, she shouldn't have said anything. She wasn't supposed to come in yet. Oh, really? In the original song. Like, it wasn't her turn yet. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And that guy's a total dick, too. <laughs> he is with his pancake makeup. Uh-huh. Like, uh, her, she did, mm-hmm. which is good because we just learned in the puppet show that she does not like to perform and she's scared out of her mind. Yeah. So she's afraid of that and frogs. And what else? She's afraid frogs? of, yeah, she has a fear of frogs. We find out later on she's a very, she says it in a very early episode, like maybe the first or second. Huh. She, she says, like, I have frog fear. Interesting. Yeah. And then she says it again later in a, I think a season two episode, hmm. possibly killed by death. All right. Um, so Cordy is, you know, scared of the nerds. Uh, Willow on stage. Xander gets attacked by. A cl- he starts to follow a candy bar yes. trail. Only a teenage boy would follow candy on the floor. <laughs> but first of all, like when he gets into, comes back into the school for whatever reason, the school is like in just like chaotic disarray there's swastikas Swastikas on the yes they're obsessed with nazi germany i don't understand (laughs) why yeah there's like spray painted swastikas all over the place i don't understand so xander in all this madness he finds a trail of candy bars Mm -hmm. and he starts to follow and eat and follow Mm -hmm. and eat and follow and eat until he comes across this one candy bar Uh. that's like the chocolate hurricane yeah that he hasn't had since his sixth birthday Day. And then it, you hear this awful <laughs> laugh, and out comes my worst nightmare. Fucking Pennywise. With a knife. With a knife. A big knife. Yes. And he starts chasing Xander. <laughs> and Xander's reaction, just fucking hilarious. Yes. Like, uh, well, <laughs> I love when he comes across uh, Willow and Giles, mm. and he's just like, run! And <laughs> Giles is like, oh! <laughs> and he starts running, too. But then Xander has the best. He's just like, you know what? Fuck I've had this. Enough. Yeah. Done. Right. He stops. Yeah. He's just like. Mm, he turns around and punches the clown. <laughs> yes. You were a bad. 
You were a bad clown. Your balloon animals were terrible. Anybody can make a giraffe. Yes. <laughs> and that's when we kind of figure out if you can overcome the fear, mm-hmm. then your nightmare can't hurt you. Exactly. So why all this is happening, the, the gang starts to figure out that it has something to well when they when the smoking girl who gets mm-hmm. beat up she ends up in the hospital yeah they go visit her she tells them what this guy is saying he lucky, said, 19. lucky 19 to mm-hmm. her and they just kind of stumble upon uh the little boy not joseph gordon levitt in a coma and they asked the doctor what his deal was. Turns doctor out, patient confidentiality. Yeah. Sir, like, like, they have nothing to do with this boy. Just go ahead and tell him what yeah, happened. Sure. It was fine. And I find it questionable that this boy's parents were nowhere around mm-hmm. at any point. So this kid's been in a coma. Apparently, he got attacked, beat up, put into a coma after a softball, Little League, whatever, yeah. they play ball game. And... um so yeah, so and then Buffy later on sees the story in the newspaper, puts two and two together, yep. figures out it's a kid, same kid she's been seeing hanging around in the halls, and uh, they start to go on the astral projection route. Yeah, because so, this kid's super, super smart. Ugh, and she has this. So poor Buffy has what might be the worst nightmares, apart from oh, like we have nightmares that are just fears, right? Poor Buffy. Her dad comes to pick her up, and he's just a total asshole to her. Oh, my God. Scene one, Apple, take one. I came early because there's something I've needed to tell you about your mother and why we split up. Well, you always told me. Uh, I know we always said it was because we'd just grown too far apart. Yeah, isn't that true? Come on, honey. Let's let's sit down. (sighs) You're old enough now to know the truth. Was there someone else? No. No, it was nothing like that. Then what was it? It was you. Me? Having you. Raising you. Seeing you every day. I mean, do you have any idea what that's like? What? Gosh, you don't even see what's right in front of your face, do you? Well, big surprise there. All you ever think about is yourself. You get in trouble. You embarrass us with all the crazy stunts you pull. And do I have to go on? No, please don't. You're sullen and rude, and you're not nearly as bright as I thought you were going to be. <laughs> hey, Buffy, let's be honest. Could you stand to live in the same house with a daughter like that? Why are you saying all these things? Because they're true. I think that's the least we owe one another. You know, I don't think it's very mature getting blubbery when I'm just trying to be honest. Speaking of which, I don't really get anything out of these weekends with you. So, what do you say we just don't do them anymore? It's so terrible. It's so upsetting. And I thought you'd turn out differently. Yeah. So here's I thought you'd turn out <laughs> differently. <laughs> so here's my question. So after all of this is done happening... Does he not remember he right. said all this shit to her? Like, was it not really him there? That's was what I wondered. Just... He has the same brain disease that <laughs> Joyce does. Because, I... like, everybody else remembers yeah. what's going on, and he was, like, very much involved in that nightmare. So I'm thinking maybe it was just, it wasn't actually him. Oh, man. That's what I'm going to go with. Right. Because he just pretended like it didn't yeah. happen if, it, if he does remember it. Right. Oh, he's such so, an asshole to her. Yeah, so poor, poor Buffy. And she has this look on her face like, what? Her world is crushed. It is her worst nightmare. He tells her she is responsible for their divorce. Yeah, and, and he's not getting anything out of these little weekend visits. Yeah. So let's just cut it now. Let's just not do it anymore. Um. So then we get a little bit of information from Little Lucky 19. Yes. He finds out that, we find out that, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it was after the baseball game, yeah. and um, his coach blamed him. Yeah, for losing. So this is like low key about child abuse. Yeah, like really low key. Like yes. they don't really. You might miss it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think what the understanding is is that the coach beat up the little kid because he lost into a coma. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? Who? who? He's like a eleven year old boy. Yes, and a very small one. Mm-hmm. Like He's just, the runt of the litter. Yes. And you put your hands on this baby, yeah. and so much so that he's in a coma? And I love the way, I do love the way that 
it's not the coach that you see mm-hmm. atta- it's like, you know, coming for him. It's this horrible monster, this deformed, club-handed, exactly. you know, Which terrible like thing. What a child would have, like, in their mm-hmm. nightmares about, you know, there'd be this disorientation of what the actual problem is. And, yeah, that's just, ugh. It's so upsetting. It's terrible. But, seriously, like, they don't really get into it as much as... I, as they should. No, like, you're going to pull on this thread. Yeah. Let's pull on this thread. Yeah. <laughs> so we get um, that little explanation, and then we have this moment of... We find out what... it's And it's a combo moment. We find out what Giles' biggest fear is, mm-hmm. and it's losing his slayer. And on top of that, we find out what Buffy's biggest fear is. It's and it's becoming a vampire. Yep. Because she pops out of her own grave. Yeah. For the first time. <laughs> Unfortunately, yep. it happens to her again. And she's all vamped out. Mm-hmm. And the master's out. Well, before she gets all vamped out, the master's out. Right. And he tells her... She's He's in the, the graveyard. One who her, yes. Yeah, she's in the graveyard with Billy and the master. She's like, "You can't be here," mm-hmm. and he was like, "You don't get it. <laughs> I'm here because you fear it. Mm-hmm. You've made this possible." And again, is this, is that him? Right, or is this just a projection yeah. of her imagination of what her fears are? Yeah, because it, were the spiders real or were they just right? Because if it were actually the master, like, why would he waste time just burying her? Right. Wouldn't he have just straight up snapped her neck? Just killed her. And does he feed he does he feed off her? Because she becomes a vampire. Or he just throws her in the he grave. He just throws her in the grave. Like, he never actually feeds on her. Yeah. And if he had, that would have broken his own spell, and he'd be free. Yeah. Done. So. He can't be real. No, this must be just part of her imagination. But it's like. And it's so, like, who gets to see the stuff and who mm-hmm. is in part? Because when um, Giles and Willow and Xander come out of the school and they're looking for Buffy, then they're like, hey, when did it become night? Yeah. When do we put a cemetery across the <laughs> street? When did it become night? <laughs> <laughs> so they can, like, see Buffy's fears yeah. bleeding over into the other side. Yeah. I don't know. And is that only because it's Giles' fear as well? Because she's dead? Uh, maybe. No, it's very it's, it's really confusing. It's like just go on the journey. We just can't <laughs> just go on the journey. We can't, I guess, dissect it too much. And it's still the first yeah. season. Of course, Buffy's like, "Don't look at me. I'm hideous." <laughs> and I love at the end where Willow's like, "You still kind of dug her, didn't you?" Right. And he's like, "No, no, oh, well, yeah. Yeah. no, I totally did." What's wrong with me? I'm a terrible person. I'm Her hair doesn't change when she gets all vamp face, like poor Darla's dry, frizzy hair. How come, how come Buffy gets to keep her manicure and her... Yeah, her manicure was spot on. Yeah, on does point. she have makeup on, too? Does her vamp have eyeshadow on? So, um, yeah, so I think they get to... They figure out that this is all not Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Mm-hmm. and Because Buffy gets to whoop some serious yeah, vampire ass she's super stoked with her vampire it. powers. She's very stoked about it. She uh, beats up the ugly man mm-hmm. and in the hospital while Giles and the rest of the gang are trying to wake him up yeah. from his coma. And was it just them shouting at him that woke him up? or wo- I think it was her like unmasking the ugly man. Okay. Like she, cause she like rips its face off or rips the club or something off. She does something. Yeah. And he like snaps out of it. Oh, I forgot about the giant bees. That was just thrown in there. Just yeah. For shit Everyone's giggles. well, when they go back to the hospital, it's like zombie apocalypse has happened. Yeah. Everyone's running around the hospital. The doctor's like my hands <laughs> and his hands have gnarled up and they're just trying like, so I'm, that's what confuses me. What are these people seeing? Right. I don't understand what's going on here. Because Giles and them are seeing the doctors yes. and all their fears. Yeah. But no one sees Billy. I don't get it. I really don't understand. So then the ugly man comes to the school and <laughs> or to the hospital and this would have been me. Buffy's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Might as well. <laughs> I got all this brand new and she, Yes. And she like tear asses down the hallway at like super speed and just tackles him. Yes. I love Aunt Buffy. It. She's great. Yeah. This is the only time that we see her mm-hmm. like that. And you know, I mean, obviously she doesn't get turned into a vampire, but still it's it's interesting that yeah. they did it so early on mm-hmm. in the series, and I guess just to kind of get it out of the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a 
It was. It's. This is a good episode. She is um, scary. Hmm. Um. So then we find out. So then Billy wakes up, and this damn coach has the balls. Yes, to come and visit this kid. Were you going to put a pillow to his face? Right. If no one was in the room. And why weren't his parents there? Yes. Where are? Is he an orphan? I just. So the coach is all like, yeah, just checking on him, making sure he's still okay, blah, blah, blah. And no surprise, he's awake. Mm-hmm. And um, they say a couple smart things to him. Uh, Xander and Giles snatch him up before he can mm-hmm. run off. And I guess they turn him over to the police. Yeah. For beating up a baby. Yeah. Bastard. So the spell has broken. Everything's back to normal. And dickhead Hank comes to pick up Buffy. And she tells everyone to have a great weekend. Mm-hmm. Because Hank's going to try to buy her love and affection and attention with clothing and shoes and stuff. And even if he didn't do all of that, she still heard it. Right. She still went through that. So how is she not all weekend just like, I right. hate you. I hate you so much. Exactly. Like, exactly. Because that would most definitely mm-hmm. would have been me. Yeah. As to where, you know what, I am still feeling this pain. Yes. I feel like we need to postpone this big this We need to, visit. E- yes, we either need to postpone or we need to talk about some yes. stuff some that's pent up in here. <laughs> we need a family therapy session. Yes. Where. Because I absolutely am not okay. Yeah. I'm not okay. We can't just go shopping. And no. Mm-mm. No, it was. It's a rough situation. So Billy unmasks the ugly man. She beats him up to a pulp, and then she tells she makes Billy. Oh, that's right, and that's what wakes unma- him up. Yeah, that's okay. what wakes him up. Okay, <laughs> I had a dream, and you were there, <laughs> and you were there. Who are you people? Yeah, <laughs> where are my parents? <laughs> Stranger danger. Yeah. Um, was there a song? No, no songs no this songs week. Episode. No songs this week, and I didn't have a cordy burn. No. Because the revolve yourself out of my life That's really wasn't not that great. No, kind of, kind of lame. And the only dead count was the ugly man. Yeah, I put that down as a half because <laughs> he's not even real. It's just a half, right? It was a figment of the imagination. And um, the... now, if you die in your dreams, don't you die in real life? Shouldn't the coach just drop dead? <laughs> yeah, that should have been it right there. Yeah, but maybe I mean it's not his dream. I guess it was it was Billy's. So many times, movies and TVs pound that theme it like if you die in your dreams you're gonna drop right yeah. i have died in my dreams a couple of times i think maybe i don't know because i control them <laughs> but i still have died like an old lady death like an old lady i death? have i've died an old lady death <laughs> like my dream is to die when i'm very 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 old 75 years yes. old <laughs> peacefully in my sleep watching buffy <laughs> that's how i want to die and then if i can hit the Powerball and have <coughs> unlimited resources. I want an above ground casket in a mausoleum with an LED that plays Buffy on a loop Ridiculous. for all eternity. <laughs> I just want to watch Buffy forever. Oh <laughs> and my, my heaven, wherever it may be, mm. please have Netflix. <laughs> That's all. I just want to sit on a couch and watch Netflix mm-hmm. just continually. That's my biggest fear. That uh, just is death. Like- just like. We're just kind of st- <laughs> so. What do we do? What? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we just kind of sit here. Yeah. Or that, like, I'll die right before something huge comes out. Right. No. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I feel like dying like the day before the Walking Dead finale. <laughs> I need to know how it ends. Yes. (laughs) But that's going to happen someday. It is going to happen. Ah, the fears of a geek. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I just, I need to know how things, so please have Hulu and Netflix. (laughs) That's all. In my personal heaven. That's all I ask. It's all I need. So the moral of of this story comes actually from the master's mouth is, um, and I quote, if I can face my fear, it cannot master me, which is a pretty great yeah. quote. That's it's a just in general, fantastic just, quote. Just a great way to think about life in general. Yeah. Thank you, Master. Yeah. Like, if you can face your fear, then it can't master you. Mm. That's uh, solid. I like that. Yeah. I dig it. What are your nightmares? What's your worst fear? Let yeah. us know. Let us in <laughs> on all the terrors and horrors. 
words that come into your mind. No, seriously, we want to know. Yeah. So uh, send us a voicemail. Um, you can call 412-385-7250, leave a message, or record an MP3 file. Less than two minutes, please. And email that to revisitingsunnydale at gmail.com. We'll more than likely play it on the air. So um, next week, we're going to get into out of mind, out of sight. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't remember what that episode's about. The so Invisible it, Girl. Oh. Okay. Claire Duval. Yeah, Claire. So, yeah, so everybody have a happy and a safe new year. When we talk to you again, it's going to be 2016. Yep. Um, until then, please subscribe, follow, rate, review, like, do all the social media dance, and um, follow us on Twitter at Back to Sunnydale or me, Camila, at the underscore rugged angel. Or me, Marcel, at mspear7338. And until 2016, children, have a safe one. Be careful. Sweet dreams.